For the past 95 years, Steamboat Willie, the iconic Disney cartoon on which the entire House of Mouse was built, has been protected by an army of Disney lawyers enforcing copyright laws. But on New Year's Day, that copyright protection expired, meaning Steamboat Willie is now in the public domain. Come get me, you sons of <laughs> And so it's Mickey Mouse like we've never seen before. To be fair, it's open season only on the first version of Mickey. Still, the world's most famous rodent is already set to star in a horror movie called Mickey's Mousetrap. <laughs> and what must be killing them at Disney, this is all perfectly legal. Joe Ose is an award-winning cartoonist as well as host of Cartoon Academy on public broadcast at WQED in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's with us from New Orleans in Louisiana this hour. Thank you for taking the time to be with us, Joe. Appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, so in many ways, Steamboat Willie is the poster rodent for big corporations and their overuse of copyright protection. Initially, the laws were meant to last, what, 30 years or less? But it seems they've been extended time and time and time again. And... The only reason, it seems, is to protect Disney's bottom line, right? So is there any other reason why these protections have gone on for so long? No, I mean, that really is. I, I, Disney has been the driving force behind um, several copyright extensions, um, um, including, of course, us when Sonny Bono um, pushed for the extension for Mickey's copyright. It really has been solely to protect Disney. And we've seen this sort of happen before, the sort of taking of a beloved character and kind of morphing it around a bit. Two years ago, copyright expired on Winnie the Pooh. Next thing you know, came blood and honey. Here's a look. Stupid friends, why are you doing this, please? I would have never left that to I That grossed almost $5 million, which explains why, you know, another Winnie the Pooh horror flick is set for this year. So I guess the question here is, why go down this horror road? You know, first Winnie the Pooh and now Mickey Mouse. What is it about these horror movies that make them so successful? Well, well I think a, a large part of it has to do in trying to create something distinctly new with these classic characters. And you almost have to take it to an extreme to make it something, you know, wholly original. And, uh, you know, what could be further from, you know, the nature of characters like Winnie the Pooh and Mickey Mouse than turning them into these, you know, horror film icons? And we're talking about Steamboat Willie here, which is the original version of Mickey Mouse. That's the one which is open for, you know, public domain at the moment. But eventually all the other Mickey Mouse versions will come up and the copyright will expire. What does this actually mean for, for Disney, which is so closely linked to the whole Mickey Mouse as a symbol, as an icon, as a mascot? How, you know, what are they in for here, I guess, in terms of you know, losses and reputation, that kind of thing? Well, you know, Disney played this in a very interesting way. Um, in the lead up uh, to this year's release of both um, Steamboat Willie, as well as the silent version of Playing Crazy uh, falling into public domain, they flooded the market with merchandise. Um, they ramped up for their 100th anniversary. There was a lot of Steamboat Willie merchandise out there, you know, at the Disney parks and, you know, T-shirts and bed sheets and all the usual kind of stuff. Um, so they kind of intentionally devalued a lot of that merchandise by just making sure they beat, beat everybody to the market. So I don't think it'll have a huge financial impact immediately. Um, and their character... The version of Mickey most people know now is that more modern Mickey. Hmm. That's the one we've we've sort of all grown up with. Um, so so they're okay for a little while on this, but um, you know in the long run, yes, absolutely, they're going to start losing the rights to their characters. Um, this year, uh, Tigger also fell into the public domain. Uh, last year was Winnie the Pooh, um, Bambi, public domain. But you also have to keep in mind that Disney built their reputation and their legacy on the public domain from Snow White to Rapunzel. Uh, a lot of their most successful films were based on this. So, so it's a really interesting sort of irony for them that they're now facing. And for anybody who is using, you know, Steamboat Willie in some kind of movie or production or reference, whatever, I mean, 
they still have to be careful they don't cross a line here because Disney lawyers will be watching. Oh, yes. I mean, Disney is uh, notoriously litigious. Um, you know, most famous case being them going after a daycare center for doing a mural of their characters. Um, just in that little trailer uh, that we watched of uh, the, the Mickey horror film, um, you hear that distinct voice, that high pitched voice. Well, Mickey did not speak in Steamboat Willie. Uh, he did not speak for quite a few years. So, you know, that may lead them into a little bit of trouble. Um, you know, are they using the red shorts? Because the red shorts didn't come along until much later. So you have a lot of little details that Disney's going to be watching very closely to make sure that people are sticking to Steamboat Willie only. Yeah, and we know that they had the lawyers, they have the deep pockets, they're not afraid to be litigious. So, you know, I guess for people out there who are interested in this sort of stuff, just, you know, take care. Uh, Joe, thanks for being with us. Joe, we appreciate your time, sir.